this hobby of hers, that she had swallowed a piano made up of entire... She grew up afraid that her inner piano would shatter. Every time my voice cracked growing up, I should have said that instead. I should have been like, oh, sorry, it's my inner glass piano. It's just untuned. Shut up, man. This was a real issue, though. She would enter a room slowly and so no join. Like, to avoid cracking that personal piano problem. That's wild. Imagine seeing this. But just like King Charles VI, he thought he was going to break at any given moment. Saying you were made of glass was quite an uncommon delusion, but we've seen it in royals more than once, so no one knows what's going on. There's actually a play on this glass delusion. The play is called The Glass Piano by Alex Sobler. It's pretty new, so if you have a chance to support some wild history and feature, go for it. Number two, the anti-theft briefcase. Morning commutes can be quite hectic. I'd say we thankfully have slim, safe anti-theft backpacks so you don't have to worry about losing any belongings in your early morning rush. Well, in the late 1950s, they had anti-bandit bags, which had a couple of neat tricks. If you ever want to feel like Inspector Gadget on your way to work, here you go. The first one came out in 1959. Banks were being robbed while transporting cash quite often, so just just wondering what a red mist would cover the not so- Our parents find out. Like my mom and my dad, aka your stepmom and dad, stepbrother. What if they find out I'm pregnant? So what? If the time comes, I guess the time comes. If they fall us out, it is what it is, and we we have each other. I know. So that's all. Yeah. If the time comes, we'll tell them. Baby ho, sister. Damn brother. Could get my whore. Until then, don't worry about it. We'll be fine until then, trust me. Do you wanna kick us out? So be it, they can kick us out. As long as we have each other, we'll be okay, my baby sister, stepsister. Fair enough. I know what? We'll be okay. Come on, chill up. So. Press play. Smooth criminal or scare them away. Cool. So far we're working. 1963. Here comes the anti-bandit bag. Well, what does this bag do, you ask? Well, at the push of a button, all of the bag's contents will be emptied, just thrown all over the street. Sick. Now that's what I call a solution right there. Hey, give me that file. He's like, ah, take them all. The bag that empties its own contents. Okay, inventor John Rinfred was tired of being robbed all the time, so he designed this briefcase to, you know, as a solution. Where if you turn your thumb the wrong way accidentally, you're hilariously late for work. Yeah, my briefcase almost got stolen, and then I had to gather all of my things. Yeah, Horrible morning. The worst. Sorry I'm late. And finally, number one. Ice Palace. If you like Frozen, you'll get a kick out of this one. Anna Ivanova, the Empress of Russia from 1730 to 1740. This crazy... Okay, let's talk about her. What's going on with this? To celebrate the victory of the Ottoman Empire, Anna gave the order to build an ice house. Sure, out of all the things, that's how we're gonna celebrate. Cool. Grab your jackets. Sorry, an ice palace. A palace. It's gotta be big and palace-like. She's a queen who just won battles. If I was there, I would 100% have just licked the walls. I've always wanted to go to an ice hotel and just see how many licks I can get in before getting kicked out. Mm. Like, what's that guy doing? Stop him! The building starts leaning. I'm like, <laughs> he's ruining the wall. This palace was huge. It was 20 meters by 50 meters, so a lot of ice to lick. And inside, there were ice trees, ice birds, and ice. You, you get the point. To make it even more ridiculous, Anna arranged a marriage with a prince and one of her maids. They didn't know each other. They were forced to ride an elephant together. And on top of that, all the guests were dressed up like clowns. This had to be number one, right? You see, it was a nightmare. Anna made the guest party all night, freezing cold literally dress like clowns. You know it was so slippery too, like they're like, whoa, what a waste of time, what a joke. If you're looking for work and living with anxiety or depression, a disability, injury, treated illness, Fuck off. clowns. You know it was so slippery too, like they're like, whoa, what a waste of time, what a joke. Starting off this countdown, we have Jean-Marie and Duberry. On February 13th, 1746, a French man named Jean-Marie was executed for the murder of his father. Hundreds of years later, on the exact same day, a man named Jean-Marie Duberry was also sentenced to death. He had also taken the life of his father. So what are the odds that two unrelated people with the same name both killed their fathers and then got executed on the same day? Like, that is just way too free. Number nine, 
Elmer McCurdy. This one is insane. I had to throw it in here. Elmer McCurdy, back so in 1911, so a bit more recent. Crazy holes and stuff. He decided to be a so rotten tuned criminal, and he attempted to rob Robert a train. Smoke. Unbeknownst to him, so the train was not full cool. of gold, but rather it was full of passengers. So he collected a whopping $46 smoke instead. Smoke. Instead of a gold oh. heist, he got $46, which back in the day was still... That was still not bad, not gonna lie. Things were going fine until he was smoke. shot by a lawman. Um, now this is when cool. things start to get really insane. Elmer's body was embalmed and then sold by the Undertaker to this traveling carnival. His body was an exhibit, almost. And for the next 60 years, his body was passed around as a prop. It was sold between haunted houses, wax museums, that kind of stuff. Check out this guy who tried to do this and blah blah blah. Such as I'm doing now, but I would have his body here. I don't know, people are weird. Eventually, the guy's body, like his real body, don't forget, ended up in California at an amusement park funhouse at Long Beach. Come 1976, there's a crew there filming the movie The Six Million Dollar Man. And that's when Elmer's finger broke off, revealing that it was an actual mummy and not a prop on the set. They went to film The Six Million Dollar Man and ended up finding The Forty Six Dollar Man in real life. That is so gross. Imagine that. Some guy with a boom mic's like, um... Number eight. Fake France. Towards the end of World War One, Paris was tired of seeing, you know, things that they love get blown to smithereens, more than fair. So they figured, let's try and fool the Germans flying overhead. Let's just build a fake Paris. Yeah, a fake Paris. Let's psych them out. They created a decoy. A very large decoy. This life-size stunt double was posted up only a few miles west of the actual city in order to protect it. And it worked. This tiny town called Mason's Lafitte, now of course it's looking a lot more full. Now it's like a rich town, not fake buildings, but actual real buildings where rich people live. That's fun. There were three different zones set up just in case anything were to drop around the real Paris. Zone A was northeast of the city, had fake train stations and mimicked a suburban region of St. Denis, but it had a big fake guard and door train station. That was the whole pull over there. Zone B, northwest of the city that was Mason's Lafitte, the main fake Paris city I just talked about. And zone C was the industrial area. So basically it was just east of the city and they had a massive factory built with literally nothing inside of it. Just a big shell. This sounds a lot like Home Alone, just on a larger scale when you think about it. But with these missions only happening overnight back then, creating a light show with some big props wasn't a bad idea. Lights were carefully spaced out on the ground so it looked like a breathing city from above. Check it out. They Looney Tune the Germans, and it worked. How amazing is that? Number seven, Mad Jack. During World War II, you needed all the power you could get, but one man, one man, one, Lieutenant Colonel Jack Churchill, AKA Mad Jack, great nickname, he had a different mindset when it came to battle and weaponry. He believed that any British soldier going into battle without a sword was improperly dressed. Also, fun fact about Mad Jack here, he represented Great Britain in the World Archery Championships. So, not only did he have a sword, but he also went into battle with a longbow. Yeah, like an Avenger. History has acknowledged Mad Jack as the last man to officially take out an enemy in combat by using a longbow, which is pretty cool. But here's the most intimidating part about him. Before combat, Mad Jack would play the bagpipes, right before drawing his sword and then running at you in battle. Can you imagine? That's some Game of Thrones stuff. A dude ripping the bagpipes, mm -hmm. dropping it, and then sprinting at you full on with a sword and a longbow? Good game. I would just fold. I'd throw my on the ground. I'd be like, nope. You win. Take it. Take off the land. Number six. Ball the Burning Men. If you're gonna party like it's 1999, at least do so safely. You know? Back in 1393 in Paris, these knights would put on these fun party performances for the king. They would dress up and <coughs> they were wild beasts. They would sit <coughs> with chivalry and dry grass and, and stuff, anything to make them look like, I don't know, a hairy beast almost. Which first of all, great bit, pretty itchy, honestly, great commitment. The party was going well and they planned for these wacky performances, so they had to ban candles and torches from this room. The king's brother, he was drunk, maybe he was, you know, at a festival of drunkenness prior, I don't know. He walked in with a torch and all hell broke loose. He got too There's close to one of these knights, one of these stuffed stop. knights, and well, I am daddy's stepbrother. Yeah, probably figure out the rest. Yeah, he got bad news. Number five, the five coffee man. This is the worst of the worst, yes, right here. I am. Halfway, let's do it. Murad the Fourth, Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. This guy I knew it all coffee. Yeah, what an absolute yeah, monster. He was born in 1612, and for the most part, his mother was ruling through him. That's not going to be so young and all. But yeah. when he got a little older, he put forth these laws just because he could, and he made these laws punishable by death, so he wasn't playing around. Yeah, this guy banned coffee, tobacco, no, and alcohol. What a party pooper. Yeah, he would take I this so seriously as well. He would actually brother. disguise himself as a civilian. 
out at night time and then wander around the streets aimlessly in hopes that you can catch one of these dark roast renegades. You were caught inside having a quick smoke break. You weren't arrested. You weren't charged or anything like that. But rather, you were the fourth himself would just take off your head right here in the No trial, no jury, just straight to execution. How horrible is that? No coffee? Could you imagine getting your head... Because you had a coffee. You do know if we are with Dora. The royal uh, curse. The remains of Polish queens and kings were discovered back in April 1931 in a cryptic Vilnius. Polish researchers yeah. didn't even know what they were in for. A storm had flooded a cathedral in Vilnius oh, and they threw down sandbags to preserve cool. the area. God forbid it. Flooded, know. obviously. But on the night of April 25th, they had followed the water into this lost chamber that held the remains of Polish Today kings Sunday. and queens. No one has found Tomorrow them at any point before. These remains I know. were Come still on, buried within the ground. It was like a bowl seen untouched. It was from the like 15th I century. Said, I would find, try right? Sadly, the flood ended up ruining all of these remains. You know, and this is when things start to get a little mysterious. Camera. All those involved in these findings to began to die to in unusual circumstances afterwards. School. One professor had died Not after falling down school, a wood shaft in his school. apartment. Another guy died before him as well Cole, due to undisclosed medical You're issues, welcome. but apparently it was so sketchy or not supposed to happen. Another oh, professor God. years later who worked in the crypt as well became paralyzed randomly at 62. You know a sculptor also involved died Which in a freak accident. Wait, and another professor died in 1936 shortly after visiting the crypt again. I hope this isn't an ancient curse because these guys were legitimately Fuck trying it, right. to preserve history and avoid the, the crypt thing flooding. Was... We need a leech report to prove this whole situation. The worst thing that they can do is just kick us out. My name is Alex Kroon. I work so, as a management framework team. What's the tool is right? Fair enough, I guess. I Just know. Just explain everything. Number three. So it's tell them off camera. Wait, is this an actual thing? Damn deal, daddy, brother. The girl mode of horse sister. There's a baby on the way. I Let's know. Party. Baby just came out. Let's party. Baby turned one, now we gotta party at like 11 a.m. We just love celebrating. We'll find excuses to celebrate. Well, the festival Bobby of drunkenness in Egypt brother. back in the 15th century just well, well, they got right to the point. Just drink your faces off. That's younger. it. This religious event no, in, yeah, well, be too religious my event, was to celebrate the Egyptian sun god Ra. And the story goes well, as too such, Ra stopped the end of the world way back in the day when Hathor was planning on devouring all of life. So Ra successfully thwarted the plan by getting the drunk of 7,000 jars of beer. Oh, we are not related. You can call me sister, and that's so now the girl was so drunk that it couldn't, yeah. you know, devour everybody. So ancient Egyptians would honor this again religious event by getting absolutely plastered. That's true. If you didn't pass out, that was Even considered offensive. We're not like related. Not we can meal. still call also, each other brother. Also, drink responsibly. Number two, Caesar and Caligula. Running the clock back to yep, 12 CE, Caius Caesar, aka Caligula, aka the Roman Emperor at the time, apparently he was close with his horse. I had two dogs growing up. I would ride or die for those little piggies, okay? I get it. I'm an animal lover myself. And if I had the money, yeah, I would probably make them a house. Just for them just to run around with and all that jazz. Well, he gave his horse a marble stall, and it got to the point where they were so close, Caligula was about to appoint the horse to high office of council, but he was taken out. Imagine if he had lived and this happened. What would those meetings look like? What would they smell like, rather? I don't want to know. Let's move on. And finally, coming in number one, Adrian Carton de Wyatt. Over the course of six decades and four wars, Lieutenant General Adrian Carton de Wyatt survived the impossible multiple, multiple because times. Smoke He's now considered baby one of the most dedicated soldiers of all time because, well, AKA for my sister. after he lost his left hand and so his left eye, Adrian fuck. did not retire. Damn after baby, crash, good girl. Our officer went on to experience Ten more horrible injuries. Can I call you As Shampoo Master Alpha, Alpha God? Show my baby he was sister. The forces of the Thank Jewish you. In doing You're so, welcome. he was shot in the arm and face. That's how he lost his left eye. But a grim detail. Love you, my daddy, boy, boy, Shampoo Alpha God. Well, you killed my baby do anything, horse sister. Not a single thing about his eye. So he must have been in pure agony the entire time. Literally, he must have been just. The worst pain. Lord Hizmet uh -huh. continues to believe that losing his eye was actually a blessing in disguise because the incident allowed for Adrian to relocate to Europe where even more action was waiting for him. Once stationed in Europe, Adrian received wounds to the head, hand, stomach, groin, leg, ankle, all by bullets, all a bad time. And if that's not inspiring enough, he survived numerous plane crashes and a broken back afterwards. If you feel like reading more incredible details about the soldier and the diplomat, I am Baba, Shanghai yeah, Daddy, Master Alpha God. Yep, you more of a freaky dick, aren't you, sister? Yes, I still am, Daddy, Baba, Shanghai Alpha God. You got them right. You more of a bloody hole. Notice how there's no pre-roll ads. My step-sister boo. And here's how...
Kicking off the list at number 10, SS Garisopa. We'll kick off this deep sea part three with a yeah, shipwreck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever it comes to underwater stuff, I think I have thalassophobia. These were hard to look at and look into, rather. I got chills looking at these photos, honestly. The SS Garisopa was once a thriving British cargo ship. Back in 1941, during World War II, the cargo ship was en route, returning from India carrying a pretty nice amount of silver. It was a lot of silver, an, an alarming amount of silver. A storm rolled in, so the captain made a quick decision knowing what was on board to avoid the rough waters as much as possible so the ship changed direction and started heading towards ireland again this was 1941 during world war ii so not a great time to head that direction the ship was spotted by a german plane and a u-boat later claimed the lives of the ss garisopa's 85 passengers news traveled quickly and once the war came to an end a few divers checked out the area there was nothing now fast forward to 2011 odyssey marines team found the ship 14,000 feet below the surface surrounded by just pure darkness the team kept around 80 percent of the treasure found and the rest went to Her Majesty's Treasury. In case you were wondering, there was around $150 million worth of treasure found. Yeah. If you can do it, then go grab it. Well, sure. It's like one of those things that. where someone's like, hey, you want $150 million, million go into this deep, dark, scary thing. Would you do it? No. My answer is no. In our number nine spot today, we have the Toya Maru. This ship was a Japanese train <laughs> ferry that was out to sea in between the islands of Hokkaido and Honshu in 1954 when it was struck by Typhoon Marie. The captain tried to ride it out and attempted to anchor the ship in place, but the winds were so strong that it broke free. Seawater began pouring into the engine compartment, which then caused the steam engine to quit running, and the ferry was then completely uncontrollable. The captain continued to try whatever he could to get the ship to safety, and he even tried to beach the ship, but unfortunately, the waves were just too powerful. After being Can tossed second? around in oh, the God. waves and battered by the water, and after all the rain and strong winds, already? the ship ended up capsizing and sinking. In the end, 1,163 people lost their lives in this disaster, including 35 American soldiers who are members of the U.S. Army's 1st Cavalry Division Artillery. The Toya Maru wasn't the only ship sunk in this storm, as Typhoon Marie also sank four other ferries as well. In our number eight spot today, we have... Redditor Nuke Storm said that he was exploring his... Which new was joined smoke down the fog. Oh, God. Of his attic. God he only noticed it while moving around some boxes up there. The door down. was about four foot tall with a metal grate fastened over the hole. He opened up the door carefully, not knowing what he would yeah. find. Inside, he found a single light, a small hard bed, and walls with like? foam padding. At first, it seemed yes, odd, I but not too like scary. That wasn't until he noticed one cool. thing. The inside of the door you, had baby, no brother. handle and no Love lock. Too, whoever baby, was sleeping in here was you meant to be trapped now. in there, kept as Thank a you. prisoner by whoever You're was on the other side of that door. The padded walls meant that if you were locked <clears> in there, nobody would ever hear you, no matter how loud you screamed. Who was kept here? Why were they imprisoned? And perhaps more worryingly, where are they now? Next up, at number four now, we have the Mole Man. 121 Mortimer Road in East London has a secret. Back in 2006, the front of the house looked like a crumbling ruin. The roof had caved in, three of the windows were boarded up, and cracked paint peeled from the wrinkled walls. But behind the house lies something astonishing. The owner, William Little, had been digging holes behind the house since the early 1960s. By chipping away at the dirt with a shovel and a homemade pulley, he created a web of tunnels and caverns. Some of them were 26 feet deep and spread for 65 feet in every direction from the house. By doing so, he had shifted over 3,500 cubic feet of dirt. The council had been vaguely aware of his digging, but had no idea it had Bobby reached Daddy this extent. Baba. When one side of the street lost Bobby power one day, baby. and he tapped into a 450 volt yeah, cable, yeah. the council admitted that Mr. Little's yeah. tunnel were now putting the neighborhood You're at risk. They obtained a call Alpha order to temporarily evict him in order to enable Baba. engineers to fill the holes with cement. Yeah. Mr. Little was billed for the 100,000 oh, pound cost. Man. The mole man, as locals yeah. called him, was questioned about why he dug the holes. He only ever said it was a wine cellar. His neighbours seem to think that he lied, though, and there is much more to the story of the Mole Man. Next up, out of the three now, we have the weapons. The pictures you're about to see were posted online by a guy who bought his new house for pretty cheap Love after the previous owner passed away. He'd already seen the basement when viewing the house, but it wasn't until a lot of stuff was cleared out that he noticed a suspicious piece of wood next to the stairs. When he tried to move it, it just wouldn't budge. He grabbed some tools and managed to pry the wood away from the staircase and the wall. What he saw inside shocked him. It was a small room, only about four by four. Inside were 
gun cases, military ammo crates, and a big grey metal container. This was more than just a hobby. Whoever put this here needed a lot of weapons and guns. Also, there was a large safe. He estimated it weighed at least 200 pounds. One of the crates even contained a grenade. Then there was a bag full of hundreds of thousands of pennies. Why not keep money in notes to save space? Well, if the economy ever collapsed and money had no value, the copper in the pennies would actually be worth a lot simply because Love of you, what they made of. It looks like this person Love might have been preparing for the Thank end of times. Oh, Were they God. wrong about it happening? Or is it still yeah, yet to I come? Moving on number two it. now, we have the subway bedroom. Yes, in December 2015, are. authorities in Berlin were shocked to find a secret room on the city's U9 subway line, specifically a bedroom. It was discovered during yeah, a routine bedroom. fire inspection of the tunnels. The bedroom yeah, was complete with a table, before. chair, that lamp, TV, and of course, oh, a bed, yeah, which was very neatly yeah. made. The next question yeah. was now, Whose bedroom is this? Well, nobody seems to know, but there are some theories floating about. German social media suggested it may be students saving on rent, or perhaps artists staging some kind of performance. Authorities have a different theory, though. They seem to think it was created by someone involved in Berlin's graffiti scene. Tagging trains and platforms with spray paint is still a common activity in Berlin. It's thought that this bedroom was the hideout of one of those underground graffiti artists. And finally, number one now, we have the House of Knives. In 2015, police officers are arrested a woman who tried to stab an officer. When they entered the room, they were shocked at one of the rooms they found. The whole place was covered wall to wall with Photos of the home showed a number of dark rooms like this with hundreds of knives and several fake skulls scattered around the rooms. Weird fake that. severed limbs were also seen hanging in the home along with fake skeletons with knives stuck in them. When police arrived at the house, they found her hiding in one of these rooms, lurking in the dark behind the many rows of blades. When she eventually came out, officers used a stun gun on her, a black staircase that spiraled downwards. By this point, they were already very freaked out. About halfway down, they found a crawl space and to their absolute horror, it looked like someone had been living there. There was a makeshift bed covered in their own Halloween candy. They realized that whoever was living there must have crawled into their bedroom when they weren't there to steal candy from them before retreating back to their hiding spot behind the bookshelf. I think at that point, I'd either be running out the front door or just jumping straight out the window. Moving on to number six now, we have Black Mold. Jason and Kerry Brown were a couple from South Carolina who were renovating their new home in 2000. 2005. They began to remove some bookcases in one of the bedrooms when they discovered a hidden passageway that led to a hidden room. Nervously, they walked down the dark corridor and there, in the very Love small daddy, room again, they found Love a mysterious too, my note from the previous owner. It daddy, read, yes, you found it. Hell. Hello. If you're reading Hello, this, then you found the secret room. I owned this house for a short while, and it was discovered to have a serious mold problem, one that actually made Who's my I children hope? very sick I am to the point we had to move out. Kerry Ann Johnson Senpai, were naturally Alpha very shocked God, by this. Martha. They eventually made contact with the previous yep. owner, who went into more detail about that situation. After some tests on the house, Bloody. they found that it was true. The house had levels of black mold four to five times higher than you're the outside, potentially dangerous for young children. It Damn. seems the house broke up a long time to discover it pause it let's go done red on a fuck my room your room out here our parents room your room cool i know well this is my room yo it's not much but yeah it will do yeah i know okay ready yeah Ready? Yep, you got the right your hole. Sister, put your hair back. What's fucking out, not in my place. Oh, hi there. It's, it's been a month, hasn't it? Well, since then I I told my stepmom and my stepdad, me and my sister are going out and fucking they brought me this place here for me and my stepsister. But tell a joint that I'll show you around. Have a joint for a day. Now I'll show you around my room, my guys. I'll show you around my crib. Let me get off. 
This is the lounge room, as you can already tell. Kitchen. Then table. Bathroom. The basement. This is storage area. Nothing special. Then, up here, we have bedrooms. Mine and my sister's room. We got, we get a separate room. This is my room. And this is my sweaty little hole sister's room. So, yeah. Then up here is the attic. Nothing special besides, you know, boring attic. Then down here we have... I told my dad I want to be a music star and a YouTuber. So he brought me this place too. My own YouTube studio area. Over here. Wanna be a rapper and a YouTuber. My read. Read room. And. Music studio, a studio here. The music studio area. <laughs> Up here. Game area. A uh, gaming area. Then, up here we have another recording area, YouTuber, you know what I mean. So yeah, you know, why, why not, why? I want to be a hip hop star and a YouTuber, so why not have your own company? Why not my dad buy me a company? Right? My stepdad anyway. My first dad. I never knew my real mom or my, or my real dad. You know what I fucking mean. Okay. Was it this way to go out? Yes, it was. Right now, my skinky little whole sister. This is at middle school. I am skipping school, yo. <laughs> Press play. What's this guy come? Okay, we are back for some good old fashioned horror. You guys can't seem to get enough of me having heart attacks, so we're doing some more. Last episode, you guys told me you wanted me to finish the games that we started, so I promise I'm going to do that. To the best of my ability, I have three more creepy-ass games that I think you guys are going to enjoy. This is Raven's Point Basement Demo. Uh, it's fairly new. All I know is that we have to find some kind of rabbit. It might be the bunny from Silent Hill 3, which I'm not thrilled about, but I put myself up to this and I got I have to do it. This is by uh, Gerbo Frogman, and links will be down in the description below for this game and the others that I played today. So be sure to check them out if you want uh, to support the developers or try it out for yourself. Okay, so I'm not in the correct like state of mind for horror, but we're just we're gonna do it because we're done. It's the time. This one is Hello, Bond.
description of the game. Oh, I get an inventory. Okay, so I can close my eyes, which is a nice little feature. How do I... Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to take that. Oh, God. You gotta love these horror graphics with the flashlight. Dude, this, this, this is taking me back, man. That's a bloody bunny. Is that a bloody bunny? I don't hear any laughter. Is it my... Wait, am I hiding or is it hiding right now? Oh, that is a bloody bunny. Oh, if I close my eyes, poof. Oh, that's easy. That's easy. What am I worried about? I'm not even going to play it up, dude. I'm terrified right now. My stomach is turning over. I'm not good. I'm really not good with horror games. What kind of dumb... What kind of stupid idea was this for me to play freaking scary games in the middle of the night? Uh, this is such a stupid idea. Where am I going? <gasps> what happened? Oh, wait. Where, where, where's my sister? Go on. Go on. Get yeah. What the hell did he just say? Oh, no. Am I taking it? I'm taking it. Picked up creepy bunny. It's like, it's got claw marks on it. It's been decapitated. It's a weird bloody bunny doll. I don't remember owning this. It looks handmade. I bet it does. Didn't know. There's more than one of them. Wait, there's more than one of them. I don't know how many exactly. It's hard to tell when you can't tell them apart, but there's more than one that much I know. Be careful. Yeah, I'll do my best. Okay, I am lost. The lights work. Is this... I found it. I found it. I found something. What is that? Let's play. No. How about no? Hmm. Oh, shh. There's a blood in there. What did that happen? This basement isn't very big. <gasps> Wait, am I finding it or is it finding me? I hear it laughing. Hello? Close it. Let's head to bed. Wake up in the morning. Go record. <coughs> At the fucking studio can. Why not right? This is my room here. Head to bed. Seven, seven in the morning. Let's go to my studio and record. Go upstairs. No, no fuck. Not go upstairs. Go down here. Over to here. You know what I mean. Press record. Three, two, one, go. Have a bomb for a day.
I'm a pull up with that baggy bitch. Nuts hanging like saggy tits. Chase way like it's batting, bitch. I hit the line and catch the drip. On the line like catch a fish. Born right, can't catch my drip. Kill the pussy, the be on the grave. She can rest in piss. These all lie like a rug. Sassy brass, Mr. Rub. Smoking blood after blood. Boy, I'm hotter than a bug. When she throw it back. I'ma catch that ass with my glove. Tell the throw it back. Shaggy, so sharp I almost stabbed me. I'm looking spazzy, grab my nuts when I'm rapping. I just picked it off the tree. Uh, God damn, I smoke good. I just picked it off the tree. Uh, 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 little shorty look good. And she coming home with me. Uh, uh, God damn, I look good. I got my fit from overseas. Only time you ever see me with my head down is when I'm rolling up my weed. Life been good, I'ma smoke good, I'ma have a good time. Life been good, good to me, and I'm gonna miss this good to me. She got to smoke good, but she don't like to get real, real high, real high. Life been good, good to me. Huh. Write shit down. Out some things out. Edit some things out. The title is gonna be Run Up My Weed Upload. Alright. Shit. Sit down again. Press record. Three, two, one, go. Look at Bond. And yeah, let's edit, edit some things out. Talk for you. So, yeah, edit some things out. The title is going to be Talk for your Senpai. Upload. Press record again. Okay, here we go. So I shoot tequila like a morning cup of coffee. I do. I don't wanna be sober with the use. And my labels on my ass, they won't stop fucking calling if I 